things you talk about in the book is the character. And it's not just the character of the performer, but the character of a song. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So this, The Heart of Vocal Harmony, is a book that I felt compelled to write because I found myself when working with different vocal groups, and it could be large choirs, it could be small ensembles, it could be pop groups, it could be classical ensembles, it could be with instruments, it could be without. They all have the same problem. When I go to work with a group, I want to make the music powerful and impactful. And the bottom line is, the thing that makes music impactful is not perfect tuning. None of you guys go home after a long day or a long week and say, I just need to listen to the most in-tune piece of music I own. You choose music because of how it makes you feel. However, through the tradition and the history of vocal and choral music, at least in America, at least as long as I've been living, it's all about the pitches and the rhythms. I remember I studied choral, choral music since I was five. I was in church choir, and it was always, here are the right rhythms, here are the right pitches. How often do we talk about what a song means? How often do we talk about the character of it? So I'll get up there, and I'll hear a group sing, and I'll be like, great. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure I understand what are you guys singing about? What are you trying to say with this piece of music? What's the purpose? What's the message? And it's not just the lyrics that inform that, no, right? it's everything. Yeah. It's not just lyrics. It's the history of the song. It's the songwriter, the context in which the song came out. I mean, there's so many different layers to it. The tone. And the tone of the song, the yeah. chords, everything. It all goes to inform it. But I would be met with so many blank faces. Mm -hmm. It was like people, it's like we have an entire collective culture around speech delivering in our culture, or debate culture, and everybody gets up on stage and they speak, and they pronounce their words perfectly, right, or many do, and they're really focused on grammar, and they have no idea what they're saying. It'd be like everybody's mm. speaking in ancient Greek or something, mm -hmm. and they sound really good speaking in ancient Greek, but they don't know what the words mean, or occasionally they do, oh, this one's about joy, I think, so maybe I should be happy when I <laughs> sing it. <laughs> Except the problem is you, you can't rely on the serendipity of personal emotional yeah. experience to translate on stage. Let's say it's a Tuesday afternoon, you're not feeling particularly joyful. <laughs> you can't just yell at your singers and be like, okay, be happy, here we go, two, three, five. It doesn't work any more than your parents could turn to you when you were a teenager and say, like, stop frowning. Like, it doesn't work. So this, the whole purpose of this book is to look at and address the issue of group harmony singing from an emotional perspective, to help give you as a director or you as a singer some insight into how do people look at the meaning of a song, how do you address the nature and the tone and the character of a piece of music, how do you get yourself and your singers into the right frame of mind and deliver that emotional content as well as the technical content <coughs> over and over and over again. In the book you speak with some of the groups that have um, really found success with work in acapella, like the yeah. Pentatonics. Oh, totally, yeah. Um, did they sort of always understand this, or is this something that they've grown into with the character of their songs and storytelling? It's, I think it's a combination. So working with Pentatonics in the first season of the sing-off that they were on mm -hmm. in season three, um, they were three friends from high school, and then two other people that we put them together with right beforehand, mm -hmm. and they were finding a sound and finding a character and the way in which we approached each piece of music that, that I made very clear to them was, don't go to the music, bring the music to you, mm. if that makes any sense. Mm. So when they would do Video Killed the Radio Star, when they would do a country song, it wasn't like, try to copy this artist. It was, who are you? What does this song mean to you? And how can we make all of the musical choices and the tempo and the key and the yeah. chords and the flavor reflect your own personality? Well, that's what was so exciting about um, their Jolene with Dolly. Yeah. It totally flipped this song that we've mm -hmm. all heard her sing a hundred times. It flipped it on its head, even with her. It, it was like seeing her sing that song for the first time when she did oh, it with nice. Yeah. And I, 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 when I was, you know, going through your book and I, I started it read about character, I thought about that moment watching her with them and saying, oh, I've never heard that song like that before. Because they, it's them who did that. It's, I mean, That's Dolly right. certainly adds to it, but not, I love Dolly, don't, you know, don't tell her I said that. But, um, but it's them. And so she was changed by them. Yeah. You know? That's right. And, and I think Pentatonix has only approached music that way as a group, which is, which is mm. good. And really the way that everybody should approach a piece of music. One of the things, one of the chapters in there is about finding your voice. Mm. And when I mean find your voice, it's not like find out where your vocal range is, find your pitch. It's more, you know how James Taylor has a voice? Not mm -hmm. just his voice, but a sound. He has a style, he has a personality. You can hear a James Taylor version of anything. You can hear him doing Summertime. You can hear him doing Happy Birthday. In three seconds, you can ask James Taylor. 
And part of it's the character of his voice, but part's his phrasing, it's his tone, it's his personality, it's his character. He knows who he is, and he approaches every piece of music from where he comes from. Same thing for Aretha Franklin. Could be groups too, we're cool in the gang. And you're cool in the gang, you're like, that's cool in the gang. You hear Earth, Wind and Fire, that's an Earth, Wind and Fire tune. I've never heard them do the song, I've never heard the song, I know that's Earth, Wind and Fire. That's really what you want because in the same way that you can see a great painter and you know that's Picasso, you know that's Renoir, they have a character, they have a nature, that's the highest form of art or artistry is, 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 to, is to have that and do that. And that's a lot of what this book is about. It's about taking this music, understanding what it is if you're doing a cover song or, or however a piece of music exists in culture and bringing it to you and infusing it with your own meaning, your own personality, your own character. Well, exactly correct. I, I wrote this book specifically because the number one problem I found myself addressing was the same problem time and again. It wasn't even regional. It was completely national, if not international. Um, there are some places where it wasn't a problem. South Africa, not a problem. Brazil, not a problem. But in America and in Europe and in Asia, problem. Focus on musical technicality. No idea how to connect to, to a song emotionally with any kind of consistency. So since I found myself talking and working with these groups on the same fundamental things over and over again, I realized I should write some piece down so that people can start to think about music from this perspective, because it's really the place that it should come from, and it's the place, it's the thing that draws us all to music as listeners. And I also know a lot of choral organizations are struggling to either get members to join or trying to get audiences, whereas contemporary acapella, it's exploding, and that's because these groups are singing music that they love and they're connected to it. That's the main reason. I'm the